and um, it is going to be shared with other students that sign up for the class. So if you're comfortable with your video being on recording, then that's fine. But if you're not, you guys can take off the video as well, okay? So before we start, I'm going to just share with you guys the guidelines that we have. Oh, sorry, let me share my screen. Okay. So today we are going to be traveling to Mars with a pasta rover. And some virtual lab guidelines that we have is that you please refrain from commenting without first raising your hand or being acknowledged by the, the, the instructor. We do want to make sure that um, we are able to hear and answer everyone's questions. Um, try your best to participate in the Zoom poll at the beginning and the end of the experiment. So before we start our experiment, I have a couple of questions for you guys just to gauge your information prior to the lab um, and to see how much you learn after the lab with the post question. So you don't have to know all the answers. Just try your best to answer them as best as you can. Um, and also make sure to have fun if you have any concerns please contact me um, in the chat box below. Or if you want to raise your hand, that's totally fine. Um, I will try to answer them as quickly and as I see them, okay? All right, so before we begin, I do wanna make sure that you guys have your materials. So everyone has a piece of paper. Put your paper up if you got your paper. Sweet. Awesome. Everyone has their pen or pencil. Put your pen or pencil up. Okay. We have like, you just don't care. Perfect. And now, does everyone have their pasta? Okay, let me see the pastas. Okay. How many different pastas do you guys have? You can use your hands. How many do you have? Four. Okay, we got four pastas. Uh, C sharp, you got two. Okay. Um, Right here, y'all got two. Maxwell, you got four. Okay, cool, cool. Miss Cynthia, I think in my lab, I named like seven. Oh, okay, Preston got the seven. Preston has the grocery store, okay, at his home with the pasta. Um, in the video that I recorded, I had about seven different, seven or eight different options of pasta. Hi, Easton. <laughs> so however many pastas you guys need, that's totally fine. There's no... Um, there's no minimum or no maximum, really. You just need whatever how whatever pasta you think would be great to make a rover. Okay. All right. So everyone has their pastas. <laughs> everyone has their pastas, pen and papers. Okay. So now we're going to I'm going to give you guys the poll. These are just five simple questions that I'm going to ask you guys to answer. It's 109 right now, so I'll give you until about 114. I'll give you about five minutes, and remember, just answer the questions to the best of your ability, okay? So I'm gonna start the poll now.
So everyone answered the questions? Okay, great. So I'm gonna end the poll. Okay, okay, cool. Very good. Okay, so you guys have good background knowledge on Mars so far. All right, awesome. Okay. All right, so now we're gonna start with our um, lecture, okay, our little PowerPoint. Um, and then after our PowerPoint, we're gonna go through the video and make our pasta rover together. This is the pasta rover that Miss Cynthia made. I don't know if you guys can see. This is my little pasta rover and it emulates a specific pasta, sorry, not a pasta rover, a specific rover that NASA actually sent to Mars in 1997. So while you guys are listening to the lecture, uh, make sure to look out for that information. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to my screen, and share with you guys, okay. All right, so everyone, Oh yeah, you also need those. So everyone has their pasta, but does everyone have like um, textbooks or boxes or like a, um, a flat surface that you guys can use for ramps? Does everyone have that? Hold on, let me stop the share for a second. Let me chat. Okay, cool. Okay, so you do not need pasta wheels. You can use whatever pasta you have. Um, you don't need the pasta wheels. It's just whatever you guys have, you just have to get creative and um, try whatever you, um, try to use whatever pasta you have. But everyone has their textbooks and everyone has like a flat surface, like wood or uh, plastic or something like that. Okay. Cool. All right. All right, awesome. All right, so I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint. All right, so some quick facts about Mars. So Mars is in fact the fourth planet from the sun and it is known as the red planet. So whoever answered that in the poll, that was correct. It is known as the red planet because the iron minerals in the soil, they oxidize, which means it kind of like rusts which causes the surface to look red. Kind of like if you put a metal in water for too long, you know, it becomes kind of reddish brownish. That's the rusting, it's oxidizing. Um, Mars is also a smaller planet than Earth. It's about 1.9 times smaller than Earth. And it has a rocky terrain, which was impacted by its volcanoes, winds, crustal movement, and chemical reactions. So Mars is a pretty, intense type of planet not as not as crazy as some of the other ones like jupiter neptune but mars is very the atmosphere and the environment is very um not too similar to what we're used to mars also has a thin atmosphere which prevents liquid water from existing on the surface for too long and has dust storms that cover the whole planet uh, now i know we don't normally ask lots of questions in these lessons but what problem do you think would arise if we were to move to Mars and there isn't much water? Can anyone answer that? Preston? Hold on, let me unmute you for a second. Okay, what problem, Preston? Uh, you would overheat and die, maybe. Right, very good. Yes, you would overheat because we need a lot of water to survive. Not only humans, but our plants, our animals, our atmosphere, we do need a lot of water. Very good. All right. Oh, sorry. No, no, no. No. Sorry. Okay. Ooh, nope. Um, the length of a day on Mars is about 24.6 hours. So it's about the same as Earth. So the day, however long the day is, is about the same as Earth. However, the year of Mars is about 637 days. So about just below two years of us rotating around the sun um, is how long it takes for Mars to go around the sun one time. So, yeah. 
Um, and NASA is very invested in studying Mars. And one of the reasons why NASA wants to study Mars is so that they can find out if life ever existed. Um, and looking for signs such as carbon and water, looking for signs such as carbon and water um, can allow NASA scientists to see if life used to exist on Mars um, or if it ever existed or can exist on Mars. Um, we also like to study Mars because we want to learn about the climate. So scientists studied the many dust storms on Mars as well as the melting of the polar ice caps just to see how, um, how it is to be on Mars. Um, and also to learn about the geology of Mars. So they like to study the Martian volcanoes, the valleys, the rocks, the craters, um, and to figure out how they were formed. And the number one rule, honestly, the reason why they're so invested is to see if we can even live on Mars. Because as you guys know, there's a very, we have a very limited time on this earth. Um, so we try to see where else humans can survive. So um, we use all of the, NASA scientists use all of the information that they gather from um, the rovers being on Mars to see if we can actually survive there. Okay, so what is a rover? A rover is a vehicle uh, that is used to explore the surface of a planet or a moon. And rovers are important to Mars because, or Mars exploration, because of their mobility. So like we said earlier, Mars is a very rough and rocky terrain. So you need something that's able to move through all those rough and rocky, all that rough and rocky terrain and wheels allow us to maneuver through that and explore different areas of Mars um, and also learn about the different chemical makeup of those parts as well. So NASA has only sent four rovers to Mars so far. So if you answered four in the poll, that was correct. So we have only sent four so far and we are planning to send one in February 2021, our fifth one. So, so far we have had Sojourner, Spirit and Curiosity, which were together, they were kind of like twins. Um, sorry, Spirit and Opportunity, I'm sorry. They were kind of like twins. And then Curiosity, the fourth rover, which just came back about a year ago. Um, and then the next rover that NASA is going to send to Mars is called the Perseverance rover. And that'll be sent in, or it's supposed to land February of 2021. But we'll see about that. All right, so... Um, some facts about the NASA rovers. So Sojourner was the first rover to land on Mars from NASA, and it landed in July of 1997. I don't know if you guys can um, see it, but that's what, I, that's what I emulated my rover from, Sojourner, the little tiny one. So it weighed about 23 pounds, and it was about the size of a microwave. So it was a very, very very small rover and its top speed was about 0 0.02 miles per hour. So why do you think a rover would go that slow? Can anyone tell me? Let me go back here. Easton, here, let me unmute you. Why would a rover go that slow? Well, they, they don't really have anything to, like, slow them down. Well, they, there's no reason to really go fast. Yeah, that is true. There's really no reason to go fast on a planet that we haven't even explored yet. Um, well, explored much of yet. But what about the, what about the environment of Mars? Would make yeah. you... If he rushes, he'll just, like, flip over and short out. Yeah, it, it most likely would. Give me one second. Um, C sharp, did you have an answer? Um, it's kind of like so they can like take pictures of Mars and not like make it too bumpy so they won't like tip over or something. That's that's actually a very good point. Yes, so we want to be able to take pictures and send it back to NASA, so we do have to go pretty slow. Preston, what do you think? Oops, sorry, let me unmute you again, bud. Ah, oh, shoot. Oh, I think we're muting and muting at the same time. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> um, it'd be very heavy from all the, like, equipment to make it. 
Survival yeah. Hit. Yeah. So starting at first, it would have been um, it would have been pretty heavy to trap to transport all of that, especially not knowing how Mars is. Okay. Um, so actually, the number one reason why they decided to um, make it go at a slower speed is because of the rocky terrain. But the the thought of you have to slow down to take pictures. There's no reason to take, um, there's no really reason to go fast. All those things that you have to maneuver does make a lot of sense, but it has to go pretty slow because um, it's hard to imagine, but it is very, very, very rocky on, um, on Mars. It's, it's not like how we can walk on sidewalks and walk pretty flat on Earth. It's, it's very different, but very good answers. Um, so Sojourner was actually able to take 550 photos of Mars, and it actually helped NASA scientists to learn that Mars was once a wet and warm place. So if we find out that it was wet and warm, then it might make, um, it might allow us to possibly live on there because that's evidence that there was water, right? Or there could possibly be water. All right, so the next two rovers that went to Mars sent from NASA was Spirit, an opportunity and they landed um, January 2004. They actually landed on opposite ends of the planet and kind of met together. So each weighed about 347 pounds and they were about the size of a golf cart. So it was a lot bigger. However, its top speed was about 0 0.01 miles per hour. So it was a lot slower, which makes sense because they're a lot bigger. So they probably will go a little bit slower. Um, but Spirit was actually able to take the first colored photos of Mars, and it finally helped to confirm that there was actually water of Mars in the past. So we're moving on up with the rovers and finding more information. And then you have our fourth rover, which is Curiosity. And Curiosity landed on Mars um, in August of 2012. And that one weighed about 1,982 pounds, which is about the size of an SUV. Does anyone here have an SUV? Anyone? So if you ever look at your car, I do too. Her name is Jewel. Okay. Um, if you ever look at your car and see how big that SUV is, that's actually how big the rover was on Mars. And it was taking pictures and maneuvering around and trying to find information. So it was a pretty big rover. Um, it was about 9 feet 10 inches long, 9 feet 1 inches wide, 1 inch wide, and then 7 feet tall. So it was a very big rover, and its top speed was 0 0.09 miles per hour, which, was, which would make sense because as the fourth rover, it was probably, they've probably gathered enough information to know how Mars um, is maneuverability-wise, and they can make it a little bit faster. So the prime reason for going to Mars or taking Curiosity to Mars was to actually determine if the planet was suitable for humans. I'm sorry, I wrote that wrong, but it was um, to see if it was suitable for humans. And Curiosity was able to discover that bo um, discover boron, which is an essential element for life on Earth. And it was energized by an advanced nuclear power system called the multi-mission road rodeo radio isotope thermoelectric generator wow which is able to produce electricity for 14 years that is a big powerful system can you imagine something running for 14 years and providing that much um, electricity for that big of can you imagine something providing electricity for your suv for 14 years and it's always moving, oh my gosh. It's, 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 it's pretty powerful. All right, Ooh, sorry guys. All right, so we're gonna stop there. Does anyone have any questions? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Would anyone ever want to go to Mars? Can I see some raised hands? Oh, you said you would wanna go, C sharp. Preston, you're saying no. Okay, some of you guys are saying yes. Some of you guys are saying no. Personally, I will not be going to Mars, okay? <laughs> Only because it's, it's completely different than what we have here. 
and I couldn't imagine human life on Mars. But I could put my foot in my mouth in about 30 years, and there's actually humans there, but we'll see. So now, um, now what I'm actually going to ask you guys to do is we're going to take a few minutes before I show the video. It's about 126. We're going to about 130. I'm going to ask you guys to use your pen, pencil, paper, and draw your rover out first and decide how many pasta pieces you're going to need, where you're going to put everything so that it's a lot easier for you to do it um, once we get the pasta together. Okay, so I'll give you guys about four or five minutes. Yes, Easton, what's up? Hold on, let me unmute you. What's up, buddy? Well, um, let me think for a second. Yeah. Well, the, well, maybe I changed my mind about going to Mars. Oh, you changed your mind? <laughs> yes. You're, you're allowed to change your mind. <laughs> Just, there's different colors on that. It's Ooh, that looks good. Good job, Easton. All right, so now that you have it drawn out, go ahead and pick out, did you already pick out your pasta pieces? Go ahead and pick out your pasta pieces and put them to the side, okay? Also, word of caution, um, if you are using the family's pasta, okay, please do not, if you do not use some of the pasta, please don't put it back in the bag because people are going to eat it, <laughs> okay? So once you separate the pasta that you're going to use you can add a little bit more just to make sure that you don't have to go back into the bag that people are going to eat okay <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, Zoe. Sorry. Let me... Are we them together yet, or do you want us to just plan it out? You, you can just plan it out. Yeah. So let me put this here on top. All right, kiddos. You guys ready? You sketched them out? Yeah? All right, cool. All right, so you guys also, does everyone have a glue gun? Okay, make sure you have your glue gun. Okay, you guys plug in your glue gun um, right now, but just make sure that you're placing your glue gun away from you because you're not gonna use it for a little bit. And make sure that your glue gun is on top of a like, like a paper towel or a towel because some of the glue might come out um, before you get a chance to use it, okay? Yes, Easton, what's up, bud? 
Um, we don't have a glue gun. You guys don't have a glue gun? Okay. Hmm. We yeah. have a glue bottle. Okay, that could work. Or if you have super glue, that might work as well. All right. Is everyone good? All right, we're going to start the video now. Let me share my screen. to another virtual lesson with the Citizen Science Lab. Today we are learning how to make pasta rovers. As we learned earlier, rovers are used to explore the surface of a planet or moon. NASA has specifically used rovers to explore the planet Mars. They have sent four rovers to Mars so far, Sojourner, Spirit and Opportunity, and Curiosity. They also plan on sending another rover to Mars in February 2021. With all that we have learned so far about rovers, we are going to use a number of different types of pasta to make our own at home. So to begin, we need to make sure that we have all of our materials. In order to make a pasta rover, you can use any, really any type of pasta that you have on hand. So we have lasagna, Rigatoni, choo choo wheels, Rotoni, bow ties, medium shells. So I know that some of you guys have already started putting together your pasta rovers, and that's totally fine. Um, work at your own speed. I did want to say to you guys, though, as a precaution, don't use too much glue, okay? Um, a little bit goes a long way with the glue, whether you're using the hot glue, hot glue gun or um, super glue or Elmer's glue. You only need a little bit, really, to just cover the surface of the pasta, okay? Yeah, Preston, what's up? Can we make our own design or just have to be of the same design? Oh, no, you can make your own design. Um, if you, well, I guess I'll just say it now. In the video, I list three things that your, ro that your rover has to have. Your rover has to have an antenna, an, an antenna okay, because that's what it uses to, um, to sense the environment around it. It has to have a camera because rovers are used to take pictures of Mars, and it has to have wheels or something that looks like wheels if you don't have the choo-choo wheels um, so that it's able to move around. So those are the only three um, stipulations that you have, antenna, camera, and wheels, okay? Um, but you have creative reign to do whatever you want um, outside of that. Okay. You need to make sure that you have a glue gun and glue for your glue gun. Once we have created our pasta rover, we will then test it on a ramp. You can use a number of different items for your ramp that you find randomly in your house. I have a, the top of a shoe box, as well as the lids of different containers that we have at the lab. And then I have a couple of biology textbooks and biochemistry. And then I just have a random box. So really all you need 
makes a box or a textbook that you are able to stack. And then the shoe box or the, uh, the container lid will just act as a, um, the side of the ramp that you're going to put the rovers on. The lid of the shoe box also allows you to choose different angles that you want your rover to go down as well. So one precautionary note before you start your rovers, since we are using a glue gun, make sure that you have adult supervision around because the glue guns get really, really hot and I wouldn't want any of you guys to burn yourselves at home. So please make sure that your parents are around when using this. So we've already taken some time to sketch what we would like our rovers to look like. You can have your rover look like Sojourner, the first rover that was sent to Mars. It was kind of in the shape of a microwave and it was really small, but very powerful. Or you can have your rover looking like the last rover that NASA sent, Curiosity, which is about a ton, so it's bigger than, oh, well, it's slightly smaller than a car, um, and it has six wheels. So it's really dependent on what you want your rover to look like. But your rover needs to have three main components. It needs to have antennas that allows it to sense its environment. It needs to have a camera or cameras so that it can take photos of its surroundings and it needs to have wheels for mobility. Other aspects of the rover that you can add on are an arm or a head that allows it to grab at rocks samples. You can also have temperature controls that allows you to give the rover or provide the rover with heating and insulation. Because you know Mars can get very, very, very chilly. So that could be helpful. But you have free creative reign to choose whatever you want on your rover and whatever functions you would like your rover to have. But remember, your rover has to have an antenna, a camera, and wheels. So let's get started. So I actually want to make my rover similar to the Sojourner rover, the really small one that kind of looks like a uh, microwave. So I'm going to use lasagna, two, two wheels, medium shells, and rigatoni. Yeah, that should be good. So I'm going to take my lasagna. So since I'm making my rover pretty small, I don't need to use that much lasagna. So I just grabbed one piece of lasagna. And I'm going to, oh, darn. A mess. <laughs> I've tried to, I've used a couple of lasagna pieces in an effort to make my two pieces for my rover the same size. But it's okay, it's hard using pasta, just dry pasta this way. If you try to use the scissors, you may have some luck, but mine aren't perfect, but they're usable. So I'm gonna have these two pieces for my rover. I think I'm gonna have, I'm gonna hold it up like, this. Yeah, so I can just do it like that. Or try to, because some of these Rotoni pieces are a little off. So just gotta make sure that, oh, maybe I can put one in the middle. Ha! There's stability. Okay, okay, it's looking good. Right, then I'm gonna have my choo-choo wheels as my wheels, so I'll keep those there. I'm actually going to use spaghetti because I need something to hold up my 
camera. So I'm just gonna snap that spaghetti in half, maybe a little bit smaller. And I'm gonna use some medium shells. for my camera. So I'm just doing everything before I glue so that I minimize the amount of glue that I use um, and also minimize the mess that I make as well because hot glue can get really messy. So I'm going to use my spaghetti to hold my camera. That's gonna be my camera. Yeah. Oh, then I needed an antenna. Wow, Miss Cindy almost forgot. So that's my camera. How do I want to? I guess I could use my spaghetti as my antenna. Or maybe. Yeah. I can have two of these as my antenna in the back. Okay, cool. So I'm going to plug in my hot glue to warm it up. And then take a couple of the glue sticks because you can go through hot glue so fast. So I'm going to let that heat up. And actually, let me grab a paper towel so that I can leave the hot glue on there so it doesn't get on the surface. We're going to use this hot glue gun and put together our pasta roll. So I first had my two body pieces. It's important that your rover has some sort of a body because we need to protect the vital machinery of the rover, right? So my body is going to be used for that specifically, um, even though there are a couple of holes, but. It's a pasta rover, so it'd be okay. Um, but you want to make sure that your rover is as functional and practical as a real NASA rover would be, right? That's one of the skills that we want to learn. We want to take the, the information that we've learned about rovers and make it into a fun activity with pasta, but still adhering to the rules that NASA would follow. So we have our my one piece, I'm going to start with my one piece on one of the corners. I'm just going to put a small dot of hot glue. I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's just one small dot right there. And I'm going to place my rigatoni right there. And I'm gonna do that for the rest of my pieces, my rigatoni pieces. So we're gonna do the other corner. Stick our pasta right on there. And just like with any thing that you're gluing, you want to give it time to dry and just solidify so that it doesn't come undone. Some of it's coming off. So if you find that you need a little bit more glue, you can add some, but just be very careful once again because the 
hot glue is very hot and the glue itself the hot sorry I meant to say the hot glue gun can get very hot and then the glue itself can get hot as well so we'll let that dry a little bit and then after that dries I'm going to put the body of my rover on top and for that I'm just going to add glue on the four corners you gotta move quickly because the glue can dry quickly and sometimes with the hot glue gun you get like these strings of glue that come with it so you just have to be careful put that there and i'm gonna place that on top. Hopefully it gets in. Oh. Well, that one's a little short. Okay. So this piece of pasta is actually too short. So I'm actually going to get rid of that one. Let me find the long piece of pasta. No, I was short as well. That one's pretty good. All right, so this piece is good. We're gonna add the hot glue to both sides, like so, and then quickly connect them so that it's secure. And I'm just trying to secure the body of my rover, kind of like a sandwich, like a hard pasta sandwich. I let that sit and dry. And so I want my wheels to go kind of right under the bottom of the rover, so kind of like that. And I'm choosing to have four wheels. You guys can have however many wheels that you want. You can have four, you can have two, you can have six, eight. But um, if you guys are using wheels as well, I would suggest if you notice on mine, I just glued the wheels onto the base of the rover like so. But if you want your wheels to actually move, you can put spaghetti in between um, the two wheels so that it kind of, it rotates and then that can help with your rover moving as well. Yeah, Easton, what's up? My rover has treads. Treads? Yeah. Oh, cool, how'd you do that? I'll show you. Yeah. So I just used two pipes. See? Huh. Cool. So look, this piece is the camera. Okay, wait, I can't see it. It's a little, can you move down a little bit? Okay, perfect. Okay. Very cool. Good job. All right, so I'm going to start the video up again. To have however many wheels you want. Uh, but remember, we want our. Zoe had a question. Oh, okay. Sorry, guys. I can only see six grids when I'm looking at this, so I don't even see all of you guys. Um, let me stop the share and then, okay, Zoe, what's your question? We, um, we didn't have much hot glue and it wasn't sticking very well. So we made it, but then it fell, fell apart again because the glue wasn't sticking. And, um, so now we only have this and I had to table part of it. Okay, that's no problem. Do you guys have other glue? Uh, like we have regular glue, but I don't know how fast it would dry. Um, they can use the, they can use the tape too. If the tape works, there were like the I tried, but the part that was it, the tape wasn't able to like stick because okay. how the part was placed. Okay. okay. Um, if you try to use the Elmer's glue, there's about like eight minutes left in the video. It might dry in time. Okay. All right.
Let me go back to sharing my screen. So I'm just going to try to choose wheels that are all the same because you don't want wheels that are too big or have too big of a difference in size. So we're going to put our wheels on. So I'm just going to add a small dab of glue. And you don't want to use, I know glue guns are fun, but you actually do not want to use too much glue um, because then it, it just gets messy and less is more with a glue gun. Now we're going to Put on our second wheel. So I'm gonna let that dry. So we're back and we have our rover so far. Kind of looking like a microwave, kind of looking like Sojourner. Okay. So I want to make my camera. I think to stabilize it, I'll use, I'm gonna use a wheel, place it here. I'm just going to place it in the middle. And then I'm just going to place a small piece of glue on the spaghetti, the piece of spaghetti. Place it right in there. While that's solidifying, I'm going to grab my medium shell. And I'm just going to put a small piece of blue medium shell on the bottom. Kind of, but you guys can see it's just a small piece in that curvature right there. And then I'm going to put it. Stick it onto my whoop. Stick it onto my spaghetti. And I may need to add a little bit more glue just to make sure spaghetti is very fragile. So I gotta make sure that it's really on there and stick into the shell because we don't want our camera to fall off. <laughs> Let that stay just like that. I want my antennas to be a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter. I may just use the penne actually comes to an angle. So I could, yeah, let's try that. Okay, so I have two pieces of penne that I'm going to use for my antennas in the back. We're going to see if. That'll work. Get rid of that excess carefully. I'm gonna place one like that. This is my finished pasta rover. Finished. All right, so has everyone finished their rover? Not yet. That's fine. Um, I did want to show you guys the components that I have on my rover. So um, I did try to make a rover like Sojourner. So my um, 
my body, which is holding all my machinery, is right here. These like two little lasagna pieces. Um, my camera is up front so I can take pictures of Mars. My antennas are in the back and my four wheels are underneath, okay? So yeah, Preston, what's up? Never mind. Okay. So I'm going to go through, in the next part of the video, I'm gonna go through um, the rover going down a ramp and then afterwards we're going to check up on you guys. So now that we have completed our posture rover, we are going to test it on our ramp. You guys should have gotten the materials that I stated earlier. You can use the bin, the, the lid of a bin, um, textbooks, a box. Uh, we also have a shoe box here if you want to use that. And I have different types of lids as well because as you can see, some of them have these like curvatures in them these like little lips that may stop our rover so I just have those as backup. So I'm first going to start with our gray lid. I have it at the very top of our two books in a box. And I would say that would be probably about a 45 degree angle. So we're going to take our rover and we're going to place it on top and just let it glide down. Um, if you guys did use the suggestion that I gave about having your wheels on the spaghetti to help the wheels turn, this will be a lot easier. But if you just decided to glue your wheels on just like me, it's totally fine. You might just have to give your rover a little bit of a push. So we're going to start it at the top. Oh, hey! And then just let it glide. That was cool! And you know, the lid gave it a little jump. <laughs> so we can have them at different angles. I'm going to move this book, have it a little bit lower. We'll see how that goes. So I'm gonna... Okay, so rover down, rover down, but that's okay. And then I might even bring it a little bit further down. Let's see how. Okay, so. Okay, so the rover will not move right now because it's not at the right angle and also because my wheels don't really move so it doesn't really have anything to, um, it doesn't really have good mobility. But that's okay. Um, that's just what we're working with. We can try it with different lids. Let's see if we use this lid what will happen. Okay. Rover down, rover down, but it's okay. Um, well, let's try the other angle. Okay, so, yeah, girl, rover said not tonight, but that's okay. You guys can use a number of different materials that you find in your house. If you have a piece of wood, a piece of plastic, that might be a little bit easier. Um, I think lids might cause some sort of somewhat of an issue because they have these lips here, but that's totally okay. Um, you guys can also, if you want to make changes to your rover, go ahead and do that as well. Remember, this is inquiry based, and we like to try different options, test them, see what we get, and then compare. So you can do that whenever. So thank you again for joining us for another virtual lesson at the Citizen Science Lab, and we hope that you guys can join us again next week. All right. <clears throat> so let's see some of those rovers. Is anyone finished? It's okay if you're not. <laughs> it's okay if you're not. But if you are, we would love to see them. Is anyone? Okay, cool. That's fine. Um, since you guys aren't finished with them yet, they're probably still drying. We would love it if you guys could record yourselves um, testing your rover on your ramp at home and then posting it on social media and tagging us so that we can see it or emailing it to one of us because we would love to see your rovers um, and how they perform. So we do have 
We're a little bit over time. Um, so if you guys don't have your rovers um, finished yet, let's just take a quick break and take the last set of questions. Um, and then we'll finish up after the last set of questions. Let me. Oh, that's why. Duh. Okay, so we're going to launch the poll. I'll give you guys about four to five minutes starting now. Okay. All right. Okay, perfect. You guys did a lot better than last time. Awesome. Oh, Preston, yours looks so cool. Preston, you want to tell us about what's on your rover? It's like I made um, a, a fake fan at the bottom and a fake engine looking thing. The wheel. The wheels actually move. Okay. Um, it, it has a small pasta and ten, spaghetti antenna. And in the front, I have a GoPro, so I'm going to put it, a camera in there. Oh, awesome. That's beautiful. Preston, we'd love it if you could record yourself with it on the ramp and then send us an email, okay? All right, kiddos, anyone else have a rover to show? No? Okay. But you guys will be sending it to Miss Cynthia? Yes, Zoe, what's up, Pumpkin? So I can show ours, but it's not, it's the one part is still drying. Just put, put it down, Zoe, put the camera down. Um, so um, we use the Rigatoni as the wheels. Okay. And then the, the um, this part is the camera. Okay. And there's a little antenna, but the second one fell off. Oh, wow. That's honestly very, very creative. I would have never thought to use the rigatoni, and it looks very cool. It kind of has the same type of structure that Curiosity has. It's more long. That's really cool. Thank you. Yeah. All right, kiddos, does anyone have any questions? Oh, is that the Velcro piece, Preston? Okay. That's heavy duty. Wow, that looks awesome. I really want to see these in like motion. <laughs> All right, does anyone have any questions? No? Okay, did you guys enjoy yourselves today? Yes, thumbs up if you did. All right, awesome. I can't wait to see the videos of you guys testing your rovers. Um, and um, I can't wait to see you guys next week. You guys have a great week. Stay safe, and thanks for joining us, okay? Bye.